Hello, hello, I'm Brutton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get to medical school and other professional programs. Today, we're going to be talking about an incredibly important topic for the MCAT, feedback loops. And we're going to pay extra close attention to how feedback loops happen with hormonal regulation. So we're going to kind of combine these two topics today. Let's start by diving into what the heck is a feedback loop. Well, to understand feedback loops, you want to know that they are all about balance. They're the body's way of keeping things in check, especially when it comes to hormones. There are two types you need to be intimately familiar with for the MCAT, positive and negative feedback loops. It is absolutely crucial to be able to differentiate between the two, thus all of the exclamation points here. Let's start with negative feedback loops. These are the most common you're going to see tested. Think of it as sort of like a thermostat. They turn off the response once the desired level is reached. Most hormonal regulation in the body is going to happen this way to, well, maintain homeostasis. Positive food feedback loops, on the other hand, amplify the response until an event occurs. They are a lot less common, but super important for things like childbirth. Now, let's zoom in on to negative feedback loops a bit closer with a example that hits close to home. Imagine your body is a finely tuned orchestra and the hormones are musicians. When one plays too loudly, meaning the hormone level is too high, the conductor, or the brain, signals it to quiet down. This is essentially what's happening in a negative feedback loop. The brain, particularly the hypothalamus and pituitary gland, play a key role in conducting here. For instance, consider the thyroid hormone. When levels are high, the brain reduces levels of TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone, to bring levels back down to normal. This kind of loop is preventing excess and deficiencies, which keeps our body functioning and running smoothly. Because if we didn't have this, we would just have a ton of thyroid hormone all the time. And what happens when we have way too much thyroid all of the time? Well, hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism is not something good. And it is a video that we are making a topic on for next week. So be sure to check that one out. But before leaving to go learn more about hyperthyroidism, Let's do a quick practice problem just to check in to see how you are handling negative feedback loops. I want you to describe how a negative feedback loop works in the regulation of blood glucose levels. One possible answer, but there are many. When blood glucose levels rise, the pancreas will start to secrete insulin. The little squishy orange thing on the right is supposed to be a pancreas. This is going to facilitate glucose uptake by cells, which will then lower blood glucose. Glucose is leaving the blood into cells, into muscle, into tissue. As glucose levels decrease from the blood, insulin secretion will diminish as well, thereby preventing hypoglycemia. Because you want to make sure we've got some glucose there, right? Otherwise, we'll have no glucose to go to the brain, and then you die, and that is not good. Now, for positive feedback loops. We've done a great job talking about negative feedback loops. Let's be a little bit more positive towards the end of this video, huh? This is sort of like a snowball rolling down the hill. It gets bigger and bigger as it goes. They are crucial in processes that need rapid self-limiting end, like childbirth. In labor, the release of oxytocin enhances contractions, which in turn promotes the release of more oxytocin to make contractions even more intense and further until eventually a baby pops out, a birth occurs. Remember, for the MCAT, you need to understand that positive feedback loops are about accelerating a process to completion, not maintaining a steady state. So let's check in with practice problem two here. Please explain how a positive feedback loop operates in the process of blood clotting. You can use the image here to give you a little bit of a hint because you don't need to know how blood clots in crazy detail for the MCAT. That's a medical school problem. So what's going on here is when a blood vessel is damaged, Platelets are going to adhere to the site and release chemicals that attract more platelets. This aggregation of platelets will form what we call a clot, and this will continue until the vessel is sealed, illustrating a positive feedback loop. The platelets are bringing in more platelets, which bring in more platelets, bring in more platelets, until we've sealed the wound. To summarize all of this really important information, feedback loops and hormone regulation are critical for maintaining body functions. Negative feedback loops are maintaining homeostasis, and positive feedback loops are driving rapid changes to completion. 
On the MCAT, expect scenarios to test your ability to identify and understand these loops in different physiological contexts. Understanding feedback loops is a cornerstone of endocrinology and essential for your MCAT prep. Remember, negative loops are maintaining balance, positive loops drive events to a finish. Thanks so much for joining us MCAT Byte today. Stay sharp, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.